or get. All right, there we go. You get what you need? I did, absolutely. Okay, so my name is Nina Wolf. Currently, I work for Small Pets Select. Before that, I had an animal nutrition store, and before that, I was a special needs pet sitter. And I've had rabbits in my life for about 25 years, um, and I currently foster. So, um, I've told you about the, the Facebook. Um, I'm gonna be moving really fast today because we've got a ton of stuff and the schedule's tight. So I'm gonna be flying through this, but you do have handouts. If you have any questions, just email me at Small Pet Select. You can stop by and get my card or find me at the booth or whatever. I'm happy to answer questions. There might not have been enough of them. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, let me, we can we can share. We're together. So if, yeah, if you can, if you're together, um, I can also, if, if anybody misses the handout, I can email you that PDF later. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, a piece of paper and a pencil up here at this table. So write your name and your email, and between Nina and I. Yeah, we'll, if you want a PDF, just put a little note PDF beside yeah. your name, and I'll send it to you. Okay, maybe not tonight, but. <laughs> Okay, so we live in a very human-centric world. Everything around us is really built to make us comfortable, and it's based on our likes and dislikes. When, then we bring animals into our home, and we don't even really ask them about it. We just we choose them, and we bring them into our home, and it's easy to forget that the things that make them happy and comfortable are may not, may not be the same as the things that make us happy and comfortable. So we're gonna be going through a bunch of ways that we can remember to make our rabbit's life more rabbity and fulfilling for them. If they don't have enough of a rabbity life, then we get into some problems, behavioral problems, health issues, rabbits that won't bond because they're just too, right? So we can take care of a lot of things by being rabbity about how we live with them. And I'm sorry we don't have any projection today, but that's, it's all right, just hang with me. First, we're gonna take a look at wild rabbits versus our rabbits at home. <clears throat> and I had a little video at one point to show you, but I can't now, so I'm gonna describe it to you. <laughs> so the wild rabbits, they forage. 75% 70 of their day is spent foraging. Foraging is just a fancy term for hunting. They don't hunt other animals, they hunt plants, yeah? So think about all the different things that a wild rabbit eats. They eat leaves, they eat moss, they eat shoots, they eat flowers, they eat all kinds of different things. And when they go to chew on something, it gives them resistance. They're chewing on a root as they're burrowing, they're chewing on a tree limb or something, and it's giving them resistance. This is really important to remember later on. Also, digging, they burrow. They burrow to keep themselves safe from predators, to keep themselves out of weather, and to nest. And when they burrow, they don't only dig, they push the dirt around, they reach in there and they chew the, the roots out with their teeth. It's a very active thing that they do. They are athletes and they are problem solvers. Rabbits are smart. Right, which is why sometimes they can be a problem in the house because they're just too smart, right? We try to figure out how to thwart them from this or that. They find a way around it, you know? All right, in our homes, they've got limited space and they don't get to decide where they're going anymore, usually. Even in a, in a house that's free roam, they're still in a big crate, right? Um, They've got usually one kind of hay. They've got one kind of pellets that gives them a crunchy <coughs> texture. Um, the food is always in the same place. They don't have to hunt for it. They know right where it is. Yeah, all right, I'll go over and eat some hay. Yeah, it's not the same thing as that foraging activity they do naturally. Um, they've got some toys maybe, but not the toys that they want. So maybe they've got apple sticks, but they're on the, the floor of the pen. They're not providing resistance as they chew. So they're not interested. Or maybe they love to dig and you've given them a bunch of chewy toys. Yeah, so um, if, if 
we, if we don't figure out what they want, they solve the problems themselves. And that's when you get into the baseboards and the cords and the furniture legs and the blankets and the, the, all that stuff, right? So now that we know about wild rabbits and domestic rabbits, now we have to consider the next level, which is your individual rabbit or rabbits. Because like us, they are individuals. So you cannot make a blanket statement that rabbits love to dig. Maybe yours doesn't, they're not that into it. Or rabbits love to chew. Eh, yeah, they do, but maybe that's not the primary driver for your rabbit. So, we have to stop and take a look at of all the things that your rabbit chews. What do they chew that's permitted? And what do they chew that's not permitted? What do those have in common? What is it about those things? Is it cords that have kind of a little bit of give to them that they're looking for? Is it something very hard like a, a baseboard so they're looking for a really hard crunch on it? If you can look at those things over time, you can start to determine what toys and activities are going to fit your individual rabbit best. Test the different toys. So, God knows I love to binge watch Seinfeld as much as anybody else, but while you're going through this process, you want to take a week or two and you want to give them chances at a lot of different placements of toys and a lot of different types of toys to figure out what it is they want to do and where they want to do it, yeah? So, instead of just sitting there and watching TV, let's watch the rabbits. Give them a couple of days. They don't like new stuff. So give them a couple days with one setup. See if they like it or not. They're not digging it too much or they really seem to like that one particular thing. Change it around. Watch them again for a couple of days. Over a period of about two weeks, you can really figure out very specifically what textures, what smells, what tastes your rabbit likes best. Do they like something tied to the side of the crate better? Do they like something under the table leg better? Do they like to dig or chew better? They will tell you. We just have to remember to listen. I had a really interesting conversation with somebody today, and I'm not sure if she's in the room, um, but she was saying that um, her rabbits just, they just don't like toys, um, but they are very destructive and it's hard to keep them busy. And we were talking about, hey, there are all these tricks to make these things they're showing you that they don't care about that, but they're showing you, I care about this. There was someone else that came by and said, um, her rabbits loved hay in a manger. They loved to pull it all out. They wouldn't necessarily eat it all, but they loved that activity of pulling it out. <laughs> and the, um, a relative of hers was not happy about this and took the mangers away and now they feed them on the ground. And I said, wait a minute, they're telling you what they want you got to listen. So if you can't stand the mess with the hay, find them some other thing that's going to help them satisfy that desire to, I don't know if they were doing it, you know, with just their teeth or with their, their paws too, but whatever it was that they were doing with that, you've got to give them that outlet because they love it. All right. Consider all the factors to um, your rabbit's age, general health, history, breed, size, and mood all contribute. So if you have a very old rabbit who's a little bit stiff and sore, they're not gonna be so much into the digging heavily or the pulling hard. You know, you have to kind of gauge this around, right? And also, if, you're, if your rabbit was in another home previous to yours, they may have picked up the habit of working on baseboards and furniture and things like that. So you have to give them some positive reinforcement and deflect them to ways that are appropriate and okay with you. But again, pay attention to that behavior and feed it in an okay way. You can't ask them to not do the things that come naturally to them. That would be like telling us, we can't check our, our phones every 10 minutes. I mean, we might try, but we're not going to succeed. So don't set your rabbit up to fail. Listen to them enough to give them the opportunity to do something that you can accept to. 
going to take a minute to talk about smell because this is something else that we do in our houses that can be very offensive to the rabbits. Rabbits sense their world primarily with their nose and their ears, but they, they're, they're nose guys, right? We are so used to seeing our world and perceiving our world visually that we forget that animals don't really do that. Rabbits have eyes on the sides of their heads. They don't see things right in front of them. They don't have a wide range of vision where things are clear. They depend on their noses to smell prey and to find food. They depend on their ears to hear prey. They use their whiskers to feel things on the ground um, as, they're, as they're foraging. But eyes are the last thing they depend on. You know that pink litter that you get and the pretty colored toys with all the paint all over them? That's for you. <laughs> That's for you. That is not for the rabbit. They don't they don't care about that, and actually we'll get to that. Some of that stuff is bad for them. Um, so remember when we are, at, they're also close to the ground, right? They're way down there. So the scents are, are very, they, they're different when you're down on the ground. The air and the ground scents are different when you're that low than they are when you're up here, right? So remember that when you're using your carpet freshener, their noses are right there on top of it. It's not only bad for the respiratory system, but they don't like it. It interferes with their ability to perceive their world around them in a way that is natural to them. Other things that can upset them, um, deodorizer sprays like Febreze and stuff, air freshener plug-ins, which are usually down low right where they are. Um, scented laundry detergents. Uh, dryer towels, things like that for their blankies and things that they're going to snuggle in. Uh, perfumes, scented candles, essential oil diffusers, all that stuff that we use to make our environment nicer for us are things that interfere with their ability to, to perceive their world around them. It's not just that they don't like the smell. It's that you're messing with the way that they interact with the world. So. I have dogs, and my dogs, well, they'll run down to the creek and roll around in the muddy water and then make a big mess and jump in the car and get it all over. <laughs> Two drops of rain. <laughs> I'm not going out there, it's raining, right? <laughs> and it took me a long time to figure out what it is and asking a lot of people. And finally, we've determined the issue is that when they go outside and it's raining, they, they depend a lot on their ears, right? When they go outside and it's raining, everything smells different and everything sounds different. And they don't like it because they feel like they're at a disadvantage. They're not even prey animals. So imagine how our rabbits feel, as small as they are in these houses full of giant people, and then we take away their ability to perceive their world around them in a way that will make them feel safe, right? So you've got to think like a rabbit, be a tiny little six pound rabbit way down there and depend on your nose to get you around. And you will see that you don't want any of that stuff. You want to be able to smell the real world around you. Okay. Chewing and tugging. We're going to go back to that for a minute. Chewing is not really fun without the tug. So when they chew on things out there in the world, they chew on trees, they chew on branches, they chew on things that give them resistance. This is not only good for their teeth, but it's a strong instinctual need. So the structure that I have, we go back and forth a couple times, but what we're really talking about is their deep instinctual needs. And if we ignore those needs, we do them at our peril. So chewing is awesome, chewy toys are great, Give them the opportunity for it to feel natural to them and satisfy their instinct. Tie it to the, to the side of the crate. Wedge it between the bars of the X-Pen. Your apple sticks, wedge those right between the, the bars of, in the corner of an X-Pen. Now they can pull on those as they, as they tug. Um, things not to chew ever. And there are a couple things in here, and I'm going to hear moans, and I'm going to hear, ah. <laughs> It's, this is just my opinion, and I'm going to tell you why, but don't be mad at me, all right? Furniture, baseboards, cords, anything painted, 
That includes toys, little wooden block toys. That pain is not meant to be eat eaten. You, you've got to make sure that there are no toxins in that kind of stuff. And like I said before, that pain is there for us, not for them. So why would we endanger, right? Rabbits don't get to say, yeah, it goes in and they're committed, right? There's only one way out. So all these things go the whole way through their system. So we don't want anything in there that can have any paint, any dyes that are not food grade, any pesticides, certainly. Um, I have a thing about plastic. I know there are a lot of plastic toys and bowls out there. Rabbit's teeth are very sharp, and even the best rabbit, they're gonna start nibbling on the side of that plastic cup, right? All those little tiny shreds of plastic are going through their entire systems on an ongoing basis. That is not meant to be eaten, yeah? So find yourself a croc, a nice heavy croc, and, and don't let them eat, eat the plastic. No, just, just me, just me. Um, <laughs> and this is really gonna get you, the next two, you're gonna go in there, you're all gonna get up and walk out. <laughs> phone books. Phone books have heavily processed paper that, and that process, <clears throat> that paper process has a lot of chemicals in it. Um, and the ink is not meant to be eaten. So I know they're great for rabbits to dig and chew at them and it takes out, a, you know, they, it's a great activity for them, but I'm just warning you, those things are not meant to be eaten and your animal is ingesting and digesting those materials. Yeah. The same thing goes for paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls <laughs> <laughs> because the glue that holds those rolls together that is not food grade glue. You can get boxes, um, like takeout boxes, right? Those are food grade. They're food grade paper, they're food grade glue. Awesome, feed them to the rabbit. But these things are not meant to be eaten. And I, 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 just, I, I just wanna put that out there. Just think about that. Um, towels, towels uh, and, and blankets. A lot of the rabbits like to chew on them and they get those long threads that they can swallow and those can wrap around in their, they can cause blockages or they can also cause gastric torsion because they get into those intestines and do all kinds of stuff. So if your rabbit loves towels, that's great. If they love to eat towels, that's not good, right? So get them something that they can lay on like a grass mat or something that's digestible and, and where you don't have long fibers that can cause them harm. Great things to chew. Untreated, pesticide-free apple or other safe wood sticks wedged into the pen bars to give them resistance. Hay cubes or cakes. I mentioned earlier today in another talk, make sure if you find hay cubes that they do not have bentonite in them holding them together. It's often used as a binder. Um, and there's nothing inherently wrong with bentonite. It's not poisonous or anything but it's the glue that's holding them together. Do you, and, and I worry about that in a rabbit's GI system where we're always fighting sludge and stasis and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't seem, yeah. So just, just something to notice out there. Um, find yourself some safe toys that do not have glue or that have food safe glue. And a lot of places do that now. If you, if you get them from some of the smaller um, people like on Etsy and stuff, if you, if you email them, they'll say, yes, it's food grade glue. It's like the stuff that the kids in element, uh, first grade and kindergarten get, you know, so it's, it's fine for them to eat. Um, stay away from the dyes and the paints and all that kind of stuff. It's just unnecessary possible toxins. So why go there, right? Any metal parts, plastic parts, or, um, or, yeah, or paints, yeah, right. Um, you, can, you can do a lot with putting things under, under heavy things and getting creative with, with the things that you do have. You can make a toy uh, do a lot of different things. If you change its location, if you change where it's tied or how it's tied or what it's tied with. So you can, you can get a lot out of the safe stuff. Diet, sorry. Diet is huge. 
not only because of the, all the nutrients that they get from their diets, but also because of the activity of eating. That is really important to them. They spend a lot of time doing that. So variety to them is not only just the variety of the plant material that we give them, it's also where do we put it? Do we hide it maybe? I, maybe there's a little bit, of the, a little, little tiny bit of alfalfa treat hay in the corner of their hut. And maybe there's a little bit of their favorite hay over in that corner. And maybe there's a little bit under their favorite chair. And maybe that, right? So, or, or you got some basil from the garden and you put that somewhere in the kitchen for them or something. That activity of allowing them to run around and find all this stuff is really super important for them. They love it. And they're a lot more satisfied when they get to do that. So remember that variety is not just about the food, it's about the activity itself. Your rabbits should be eating a compact pile of hay the size of their bodies every day. If they're not, they're not eating enough hay. Even if you feed them every, you say, well, but I give them unlimited hay. That's great and it's necessary, but they may not be consuming enough hay. So just make sure that, that, they're, getting, that they're getting enough. If they're not eating enough hay, it might be because they're bored. If they're bored with their hay, it could be because it's always in the same place. It could be because it's always the same hay. And you can you know, make that more exciting with some stuff out of your garden, some dandelion leaves, you know, something like that. Um, herbs, flowers, treat haze, whatever. Make sure that whatever you do add is on the safe foods list and the House Rabbit Society has a fantastic list on their, on their site. Um, introduce new foods gradually. I keep coming back to this, but rabbits don't like surprises and they don't like new things, right? So if you're gonna give them new food, you put a little bit of it, whatever it is, off to one side. You let them investigate that for a couple days. It can take up to a week and a half for them to accept a new thing in their diet. Once they've accepted it, that's fine. You put it wherever. But sometimes people will make the mistake of, well, they really love this kind of hay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these herbs and flowers on top of it, and that'll make them like it. What it makes them do is go on a food strike, and they don't eat their hay either. They're like, yo, somebody stunk up my hay. I'm not eating that. <laughs> right? So we don't wanna do that. The litter box. The size of the litter box really does matter. Rabbits want space in their litter box. Go big. Give them a nice big cat box. Yeah. Because they do a lot of different things in there. Some of them like to eat in there. Some of them like to nap in there. Some of them have specific corners that they like to do certain things in. Some of them need more than one box. If you have a rabbit who isn't doing well with litter box training, try adding another box. Some of them only will do number one in one, number two in the other one. Some of them will only use a box that is absolutely pristinely clean and then they'll go to the next absolutely pristinely clean box. Some of them won't touch a box that's, that doesn't smell like them already. So when you clean their boxes, you have to leave a little something there and add the fresh stuff in so it still smells like them. So again, we have to watch our rabbits, let them tell us what they want, what they need, their personal preferences. All right, um, litter actually inside the box is another issue. We've got to pay attention to them. Some of them want pellets, some of them want the fluffy paper stuff, some of them want aspen, some of them want, you know, whatever. Some of them want the pellets, but they want you to put water on it first so it gets fluffy. Some of them want it mixed, you know. But they will tell you. Just give them the opportunity, try a couple of different things, and see how it goes and you may have to get creative with that too. You don't get to pick where this litter box is. You don't get to pick the litter either. You don't get to pick much about the litter box, honestly. Um, let them tell you where they want that litter box. Because if you put it in the wrong place or you move it when you are cleaning, you're gonna be in trouble. And how are they going to express that? Well, they're gonna thump and they're gonna push stuff around if they're really nice. If they're not, they're gonna start spraying. I'm like, hey, I go here. 
no box here, nothing about my problem. I'm going here. <laughs> All right, um, a couple things to remember with the, uh, with the litter. If you have an older rabbit, it's gonna be hard for them to get in and out of the box. So you've got to, there are plenty of, of uh, tutorials and stuff online and special boxes with the low sides. If your rabbit is not using the box, it could be that they are getting older or they have an injury, they're stiff, they're sore, they can't make it over the thing. Another problem with litter boxes sometimes is that your rabbit does not like to take off and land on slippery places. So if your litter box is on a wood floor or on a tile floor, they don't have purchase as they're taking off or landing and they don't like that. So you can try putting a little rug underneath where they, where they take off and land and they might be perfectly happy. Um, if they have sore hock or sore footsies, obviously you're gonna need a much softer litter and, and you really, they, they aren't even gonna to wanna to go anywhere near pellets because they're just painful, right? So kind of get inside your rabbit's body and think about what might be going on for them and listen to them. Oh, and never get odor controlled litter, ever. Nothing with crystals in it, nothing with, right? Got it, no, no. Okay, let's see. Oh, other things that can be a problem for litter, litter training is, again, history. If your rabbit got in bad habits at a former house, then you've got some retraining to do. Yep. Doesn't mean your rabbit's a bad rabbit, they just got in a bad habit. We do it too. I didn't mean to say that like that. I mean, it sounds like a little bumper sticker or something, but um, I mean, we do it too. We all have bad habits. Well, they got in a bad habit, you can break it. You know, you just have to be aware. Um, is your rabbit spayed or neutered? I'm sure that we all know by now, if we're sitting in this room, that animals who are not spayed and neutered are gonna have a higher percentage of litter box uh, issues. The last thing I'm gonna say about litter boxes is that new animals or people in the house for any length of time can cause a problem with the litter box. Rabbits are territorial. That's the center of their territory, where they eat and their litter box. So if strangers come in, and this is particularly true over the holidays, because we tend to have a bunch of family in or friends in, your rabbit may already know them and love them, but all of a sudden, instead of two or three at a time, there are 50 of them in your house. They're making a lot of noise. There's music on. There's ah, ah, ah. yeah, and your rabbit says, "Oh, right," because they're just they're overwhelmed, and there are people in their territory. There's too many people all at once. So anytime you have a new animal or a new person in your house, or you have a party, or you have whatever, you may have you know a territorial rabbit say uh, tell you they don't like it. The, the thing you can do about that, of course, is if you're gonna have a bunch of people around, give your rabbit a safe place. Put them in a back room. Give them a nice soft noise, a fan, or soothing music. I'm not talking Beyonce, I'm talking like Chopin, all right? <laughs> give them soothing music, very low, just to take kind of the edge off the noise in the rest of the house. Make sure they have all their favorite things and make sure they have a box or a hut or someplace to hide. All right, I know I'm flying through this. I'm trying to go really fast and get it all in. Uh, digging is another really strong instinct. You may all have lost parts of your carpets to this. Again, it isn't fair to ask them not to do it. It's part of who they are. Yeah, so in order to deal with that, we just have to redirect that with a digging box, a digging platform, some safe place where they're allowed to go and do this thing they need to do and love to do. Um, give them a digging box. You know, a lot of people make them out of the Rubbermaid uh, bins, you know, the big tubs. You can put paper in there or sand in there or you know, clean dirt in there or what, whatever. Just don't use Peanuts, styrofoam or even cornstarch peanuts are not a good thing to let them dig in. But other than that, yeah, find some natural substrate, see how professional that sounds, um, and let them get in there and go to town. And they can get so much energy out doing that and they're gonna be so much happier. So let them dig. 
um, when they do something good, when they dig in the right place, when they've had some litter box trouble and now they did it right, reward them. Tell them they did a good job. This does not mean handing your rabbit a whole banana every time they take a swipe <laughs> at the digging box, right? What it means though is that you can spend time with them, so give them your attention. You can come up with a phrase that you say the same time, always, when they're a good, like, good rabbit. You're always gonna say it just like that. And then you're gonna give them their favorite scratch or hug or, you know, whatever. You can reward behavior without giving the treat. Certainly, every now and then, you can use, you know, a tiny little blueberry or something like that if you want to. But um, we don't like to see rabbits getting more than about a blueberry-sized piece of fruit or vegetables every day. So I like to go with the, the, the phrases. And it works. I mean, they want our attention. They want to interact with us. They want to play with us. They want us to understand them. So giving them that one-on-one that -on -one time, that being in the moment with them, is a reward. You can also use clicker training for this, incidentally, if you're into that. Um, we've talked about smells. We've talked about some of their other things that they need and love. And just we talked about surfaces. All right, temperature, we all know over about 75 degrees, and we're starting to worry about the rabbits, right? Some rabbits really like to look out of a window. During the day while we're gone, they, they, they like to look. Yeah, but you have to make sure that you're not putting their X pen in front of your bay window with the window, you know, the thing's open all day, so they're getting mid afternoon sun with no respite. You've got to make sure that they can get away from that brightness and that heat. They like to nap all afternoon. They want to sit, you know. So give them an opportunity to look out the window, sure, but give them a way to get, get away from that as well, to get to a cooler, darker place. Um, yeah, so, you know, I have noticed something and I've not heard anyone else say this and I'm curious to see whether any of you have noticed it. Some rabbits do not like fluorescent light at all and they will try to get out of the room. I don't know whether anybody else has noticed. Have you noticed that? Yeah, they just don't. Something about the color of the light or it could be that they're hearing that, that, yeah, that noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can, don't house your rabbit in a room that's lit with fluorescent lights because they might just really not like that much. Uh, remember that rabbits are prey animals and loud sounds are danger to them. So when you're home, remember inside voices, move slowly, no stomping around, no loud music, all that kind of, if you're gonna have a party or you wanna be loud, just give your rabbit a safe hiding place to go to. Yeah. A lot of them want to be right with us in the, in the family area. Even there, give them a place to go when they've had enough. Just get a little box or a hut in the corner behind a chair. That's good enough. But we can all get up and leave the room and say, hey, I'm going to my room to read for a while. Rabbits have to be able to do that too. They've got to be able to get away when the situation is too much or they're tired. Can I interject? Um, Mo, many of you have noticed the lounge that we have over here on this side of yes. the room. We uh, we started that lounge because of overstressed bunnies who visited here at Fun Fest, and we had some bunnies who became extremely uh, upset. Yeah. So we knew we had to get a separate room that they could be closed off in. They cannot tolerate you know four or six hours of this level of promotion. So you've got to, yeah, everyone has really appreciated the, the lounge. Absolutely. So if you bring a bunny, take advantage of the lounge for time out. Yep. Quiet time. Yep. I mean, and we you need it sometimes. Too. We need it sometimes and we're not even prey animals. Right. So imagine again, being six pounds on the ground and all of this is going on above you and you know, so. All right, so just to close up, interact with your friend. Your rabbit is your friend, right? They're not an accessory, they're not a piece of furniture. They're your friend. So just like with your other friends, your human friends, you've got to meet them halfway. You've got to get to know them. You've got to reach out to them 
and find out where they best like to go out to dinner or to, you know, what kind of movies they like or whatever. Well, same thing with your rabbit. You've got to get to learn their ways. All right, I'm gonna stop it there because I think we're, oh, and they have moods. That's all I just wanna mention. They have moods, just like we do. Respect the mood. All right, so I think, I don't know if we have enough time, but can I take a question or two? Um, what I would suggest, uh, Nina, is that you move out into the hall while Mary gets set up. Okay. Um, and so she'll be available. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.